Okay, good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming to my talk. My name is Pan Li. I'm an assistant professor at the CS Department of Purdue University. Today, I would like to share our recent progress on higher order graph representation learning, which uh, can be used to provide accurate prediction of higher order patterns, such as network motifs or uh, hyper edges in the temporal networks. Okay, and this is joint work with uh, Yun Yu and Jian Zhu. Yun Yu is my student, uh, one of my students, and I want which I want to highlight here. Okay, so temporal networks, as we know, are important data structures to model dynamic systems where nodes correspond to uh, interacting elements and links correspond to the interactions. In the temporal networks, most importantly, the network structure may evolve over time. Think about an email network where senders sending emails to the recipients correspond to the interaction, uh, an interaction in a temporal network. In a social uh, media network, users may, um, so again, users may post the messages while other users can respond to these messages, which uh, correspond to interactions in a temporal network. Temporal network could be rather complicated as they entangle uh, temporal and the structural information. In this work, we are trying to handle an even more complicated case. Uh, we consider higher order interactions that may happen in the temporal networks, where one interaction may connect more than two nodes simultaneously. Think about in a, an email network, an email thread may connect multiple people simultaneously, or in a Twitter poster, more than two Twitter accounts may get quoted by one poster. Okay, now in this work, we use temporal hypergraphs to model the higher order interactions. Um, uh, and, and in this temporal hypergraphs, this hyper edges may appear uh, across the time, and each hyper edge may connect more than two nodes simultaneously. Okay. Okay. And the problem we are going to uh, address in this work is to build an interpretable representation learning framework that may predict higher order patterns among multiple nodes. I mean, more than two nodes. And we want to also we also want to find the inductive structural features that may let our model to make such prediction. So basically model prediction, uh, model interpretation. Next, let, let me be more specific about our goal. We focus on the prediction among three nodes as a proof of concept in this paper. We study the case where two nodes uh, start their interaction. And after that, we would like to predict how their interaction may expand to the to a three node to to to, to the to a third node okay that um and the third node had never been connected to the uh, the two nodes previously okay and uh, the the patterns among this kind of three nodes um you actually uh include four types okay the first type is no is called no expansion that correspond to the A here. We, later, we will also call it as the edge type. So basically, uh, the interaction appears between two nodes, and such interaction will not expand to a third node, the third node. The second type is wedge, where the third node only interacts with one of the two nodes, highlighted by the B here, pattern B here. The third type is the triangle, where the third node interacts with both of the nodes, but not simultaneously. Or say the two inter the interactions may happen, uh, let's say, via two different hyper edges. The fourth type is a closure, where the third node will interact with both nodes simultaneously via one hyper edge. Intuitively, from the pattern A to pattern D, we can see the interactions become stronger and stronger, which essentially give us a hierarchy here. Our work is one to answer three questions, what, when, and why. 
as an example, in this temporal network, uh, temporal hypergraph, we observed the first time the two nodes U and V get interacted to each other uh, at uh, time six. Okay, and well, node W has never interacted with either of these two nodes before. And now the first question, the what question, um, is we want to answer what type of interaction will connect node W to node U and or V or both in the future. Say, will it be no connection or a wedge or a triangle or a closure? Second, we also want to predict when a type of interaction will happen if there is one. This is about when. And third, we expect our, so about why we expect our model to provide a certain level of model interpretation. So basically we want to find the most indicative patterns for our model to make such prediction. Now we introduce our model heat to solve this, those questions. He's referred to higher order temporal structural predictor. Our key idea is actually very simple. We just want to use neural networks to encode the, the, encode the contextual structure uh, around the, uh, accurate, the, the accurate three nodes uh, to learn its representation. And the representation can be further used to make the prediction to answer the previous three questions. Of course, to implement this idea, we need to address three uh, challenges model scale, scalability, expressivity, and model interpretation. Uh, our model holds three steps, three key steps to address these three challenges. First, our model extracts information from the contextual structure around the three query nodes by using temporal random walks. For each query node, a set of walks will collect it will be collected. As the length and the numbers of works can properly controlled, the model scalability overall can be well controlled. This method is inspired by our previous work on lower order temporal network representation learning. Second, sampling works may break the contextual structure and causes a uh, loss of structural information. To compensate the loss of information, we uh, compute the landing counts for each node based on the sample works and group this count together for each node as a structural feature termed distance encoding. And distance encoding can, can actually provide the structural uh, information for each node. We may use such distance encoding to make our model more expressive um, than just using a standard graph neural network model. Third, our model use a recurrent neural network to encode each work, where, or let's say, where the nodes on each work will be attached, uh, has already been attached with distance encoding. And the output of the recurrent neural network will be a representation for each work. Then we use a set pooling for all of this work to uh, aggregate the representation to make the final prediction. If we adopt the sum pooling here as a set pooling, and the final prediction layer is just a linear layer or linear model, then the model becomes interpretable in some sense. So if we use the sampling and the linear uh, prediction, then in this case, it can ensure that, uh, let's say, so our model can naturally tell how each work contributes to the final prediction, okay? And then we can use this architecture to make a prediction and find the works that contribute mostly to uh, each, each type of prediction. And we use the works as a model interpretation. Now let's see the experiments. We evaluate our model over five real world large temporal hypergraphs. Know that this data sets may contain hundreds of thousands or even millions of hyper edges. 
we use tens of thousands to millions of higher order patterns among uh, creates renos to construct uh, training, validation, and testing data sets. We compare our model with 10 baseline methods. Okay, heuristic baseline methods are the metrics previously used for lower order link prediction and recently got generalized to um, the high, hyper edge prediction case, such as three way um uh, ad adamic adder index for the neural network based methods we adopt the previous sort amount models for lower order temper network representation learning these models get node representations first and then uh, we use uh, let's say we feed these node representations into the same decoder used as our model to make the final prediction for the question one on where we want to predict what type of interaction will happen to three nodes, our model can significantly outperform the baseline as shown in the table here. Indeed, so this higher order prediction tasks are too challenging for the baseline approaches, and we definitely need a more powerful model. In our paper, we provide a more detailed analysis on why this baseline cannot work well here. We also show the confusion matrix of our model. The y-axis here correspond to the ground truth pattern, while the x-axis correspond to the predict patterns. Through this confusion matrix, we find our model generally works well. However, as we may expect, it's uh, harder even for our model to distinguish the match pattern versus the triangle pattern or the triangle pattern versus the closure pattern. This may due to maybe due to the essential hierarchy behind these patterns. Moreover, our model can also achieve the best accuracy to predict when an interaction may happen among three nodes. Due to the time limitation, I will not go into details here. But I would like to emphasize our results to the question three on why a type of interaction may happen. That is the model interpretation part. Here we aim to find uh, the most indicative works for uh, the model to make certain predictions. We show the top two works that are most indicative to different patterns highlighted by the green works and the blue works here so this gives actually very interpretable results for example we find that if there are some works that jump from node w and land on some nodes that are very close to node u and v the closure among these three nodes is more likely to happen this phenomenon kind of generalizes the traditional triangle closure um, in a social network. On the other hand, if the works that are start from, if we see a lot of works that start from node U and V and tend to jump away from these tuples, the, it, may, it may indicate less probability, uh, let's say possibilities that the, the tuples of the three nodes may build connection later. Like in the second figure here, if we see a lot of, let's say, such green or blue works, we know that wedge pattern is more likely to happen uh, compared to the, either the closure pattern or the triangle pattern among these three nodes. Okay, now uh, I would like to conclude our talk here. So the three takeaways uh, about this talk are as follows. Our model heat is actually the first model that is able to predict the full spectrum of a higher order patterns among three nodes in the temporal networks. Our model can also predict, um, provide time estimation about when a higher order interaction may happen. Our model can also detect or find insightful structural patterns um, for the prediction it makes. 
To know more about our work, please check our paper and the codes. If you have questions, feel free to drop off uh, us uh, messages. And finally, I would like to thank your attention and thank the agencies that funded this project.